Often in physics we want to find the speed of an object and to do that we need to measure the distance it covers and the time it takes to cover that distance. These times are often too short to be measured accurately with a stopwatch because of human reaction time. Now this is an electronic timer and we can start it and stop it automatically by connecting things to these start and stop sockets. This is what will be used to start and stop the electronic timer. It's called a light gate. What a light gate is, is it's a light source and a light detector. You can imagine that there's a beam of light shining from the light source to the light detector and your object is going to cut that beam. And when it cuts the beam, that can be used to start or stop the timer. The light source is connected to a power supply only needs a couple of volts and the detector is connected to the timer. Make sure you don't accidentally connect the light detector to the power supply. You can see that the source and detector look pretty much the same. Mine have been colour coded. The leads going to the light source are both the same. They're both yellow. The leads going to my light detector are different. A black one and a red one. Make sure that you don't use too large a voltage with your light source. The kind of light gates we've just seen can be a bit troublesome to set up. They can be hard to line up the light sources and detectors. What you'll find in a lot of schools though is a solution like this one. Here we've got a combined light source and detector all in one unit. The light source is here and the light detector is over here. Connections from the detector to the timer are from here and connections from the lamp to the power supply are from here and it's very clearly marked with the voltage that you'll need to use it. So here's my runway all set up with two light gates each connected to the timer, one to the start part of the timer and one to the stop and the light sources are connected up to the power supply you can see in the background. Now if I want to check that everything's working what I can do is this. I can move my hand through this light gate and the timer should start and then through this light gate to stop the timer. We once came across a really baffling problem with light gates where they just simply wouldn't switch the timers on unless you completely covered this sensor here. And when we looked we found that what had happened was that the children had been picking off the little black collar round the sensor, letting too much light in from the surroundings. So look out for that if things just don't seem to be working at all. We're nearly there, but before I can do the experiment, I have to fit my trolley or cart with a mask. Now this is designed to cut the light beam. In the case of the experiment I've set up here, the width of the mask doesn't matter. Later on we'll see a situation where it does matter. I've set the light gates here to be a particular distance, in this case 50 centimetres apart. And now, just before I do the experiment, I'm going to check that the trolley's mask won't foul the light gates as it passes through. This will help me line it up. Now we're ready to do the experiment. Now that's not really the end of the story for this experiment because when we did it we found that our timer could only measure up to one second and it took longer than that for the trolley to come down the ramp. So in fact we had to repeat the experiment with a new timer. Now in that last setup for measuring speed we used two light gates and the speed could change as the vehicle went down the track so we were really only measuring its average speed between the two light gates. Sometimes pupils want to measure the speed at a single point on the track and you can do that with a single light gate. This time the width of the mask in the cart is important because that's going to be involved in the calculation of speed. Typical widths are 4 cm, 5 cm or 10 cm. In this setup the timer starts when the mask cuts the light beam, keeps running as the mask passes through the light beam and then stops when the mask is clear of the light beam. 
letting the cap go gently, slowly through, holding it with your hand as it goes through the light beam while you watch the timer is a good way of seeing that you've got this set up working correctly. How you connect up your timer varies from model to model, and of course we can't cover every possible timer here. Increasingly in schools, you'll find timers like these two, DJB's TSA timer and Unilab's QED. A single lead connects the unit to the light gate, replacing the leads that were needed for the light source and for the sensor. Another useful feature of these timers is that they have an indicator light that shows when the light beam has been broken. These timers can measure a number of different quantities. If they're measuring speed, what they are in fact doing is measuring the time, but you will have entered the length of the mask into the timer to let it do the calculation for you. This trolley has a double mask where these two lengths are the same and the gap between them isn't really important. With one of the timers that we've just seen, acceleration can be found. Acceleration is found from measuring two speeds and timing the time it took from getting one speed to the other.